Hi, I'm Matt Olin. And I'm Carrie Arnson, and we're members of the 2018 Fargo Film Festival Committee. Welcome to the 2018 Fargo Film Festival Preview Show. Here's an inside look at this year's festival. This year's 18th annual Fargo Film Festival will take place Tuesday through Saturday, March 20th through the 24th. This year we had a festival record for entries from dozens of different states and many foreign countries. The Fargo Film Festival is committed to showcasing high quality independent films and giving opportunities to filmmakers to show their work in the state of the art historic Fargo Theater as well as the fantastic intimate second screen next door to the main theater called Fargo Theater Off-Broadway. Films will be shown in seven categories. Narrative Feature, Narrative Short, Documentary Feature, Documentary Short, Experimental, Animation, and Student. The festival also contains informational seminars in addition to networking opportunities and provocative lunch panel discussions featuring filmmakers, film academics, and people in the film industry. More than anything, the festival is about movies. Movies that entertain and inform, movies that provoke thought and spark discussion. The venues for this year's festival are the beautiful and historic Fargo Theater, which is our main venue, and our second venue will be the popular and intimate second screen Fargo Theater Off-Broadway, located right next to the original Fargo Theater in downtown Fargo. For the festival's first 17 years, the Fargo Theater's former executive director Margie Bailey and current executive director Emily Beck, along with members of the various film festival judging committees, have been committed to expanding the audience for the festival. The festival will open Tuesday afternoon, March 20th, with a special kickoff press conference to be held at noon, at which time Best of Show winners will be announced. This is the fourth year that films will be screened starting on Tuesday afternoon. We've increased our number of entries in recent years, which means we have more quality films and product to showcase. From who? Sylvia. My name's Harriet. There will be panel discussions Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at noon at Dempsey's in downtown Fargo. We must say that things are still in flux with the festival as we tape this, including some of the evening showcase features, but expect lots of visiting filmmakers, actors, actresses, and special guests. On Thursday night, March 22nd, once again at All-Star Bowl in Moorhead, it will be the seventh annual Bunny Lebowski Pro-Am Invitational, featuring bowling and good times. Before the night screenings each day, there are pre-parties at various downtown locations starting at 5.30 p.m. These locations are Hotel Donaldson, opening night Tuesday, Wednesday, Prairie Den, Thursday, Plains Art Museum, Friday, Prairie Den, and the Sanctuary Event Center on Saturday night. Well, now let's talk about the Fargo Film Festival 2018 edition and uh, Carrie, I think uh, what's interesting is you've been on the uh, jurying committees now for like 12 or 13 years. What is it you like best about the film festival? For me, my favorite part of the festival is actually getting to meet the visiting filmmakers, actors, and actresses. I love films, and normally when you go see films, it's a one-sided reaction. You, you watch it, you take it home. At the festival, you actually get to ask those questions, those you know, why did that actor do this? Why did you choose the twist in the film? Why did you pick that venue? This is an opportunity for all guests who come to the festival to get those questions answered. And we've made lifetime friendships with these people, we haven't have. we? Yeah, there's, we've got some returning that we've had from the past. I've continued to watch some of the filmmakers' careers expand and go into other areas. It's been really fun. It's, one of, it's my favorite part of the festival. Now let's talk a little bit about who we have coming. Allison Becker is coming. She's going to do yes. an acting workshop. She's been on Parks and Rec, so that's going to be exciting. I think Very she's, exciting. people will enjoy meeting Allison Becker. 
and then some of the evening showcases are kind of set uh, especially uh, Wednesday night will be some some shorts and then Thursday night is our horror night and yes. you and I were on the narrative feature committee and pretty much a lot of people from the film Ruin Me are here. Tell folks about that film. Ruin Me is a fantastic horror film. To me it's more of like a thriller suspense type film which is the kind that I enjoy but it's about a group of individuals who pay to go to a weekend event where they get scared where they're not sure it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be all fake, scripted. Right? It's supposed right? to be, but there's a twist in this film <laughs> that course, you start to wonder, be a good film, right? right? You start to wonder, is this supposed to happen? Is, is it actually going off script? Is there an actual danger to these people? So it was written very well. I thought the acting was very good in this film. And then on Friday night, uh, the showcase, I'll be hosting that night, uh, Tater Tot and Patton will be one of the films. That's also a narrative feature shot in South Dakota. Uh, directed by Andrew Keitlinger, and it stars Bates Wilder, and Bates will be here. He's a very good actor. Tell folks about this film. This film was a very entertaining film. It's about like a millennial who gets in trouble in California, and she gets basically shipped off to South Dakota to sort of get her act together Middle to her nowhere. aunt and uncles. Yep. Um, except when she gets here, it's pretty much just her uncle. And it takes a while in the film to figure out what's going on, why, where her aunt is. But you watch the relationship develop between her and her uncle, and it's, it is strained when they first start. There's mm -hmm. definitely, um, she does not enjoy being in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and Andrew Keitlinger, the director, is, lives in Minneapolis. He has a lot of Fargo-Moorhead connections. The final night, Saturday, is Best of Fest. Uh, James Hughes will be here. He's the writer-director of The Velvet Abstract. That's the experimental winner and also uh, A Crooked Somebody, honorable mention, narrative feature, and what's important about this is Rich Summer, the actor from Mad Men and some other films, Concordia College graduate, yes. he's gonna be here with the film, and that'll be exciting. That'll be very exciting. I'm excited to see him come back. He was here a few years mm -hmm. ago. Um, he's, if you have not met him, if you hadn't had a chance to see him, he is a very genuine person. He's very interesting to talk to, and this film, I think, really showcased his acting abilities. You watch his character, from beginning to end, go through all these changes and- He's a con man, right? Yes, he is a con man. And as the con keeps developing into something, and it, I mean, it starts going way out there for him and, it, and it's quite the stretch and he just keeps feeding it along. And you watch, you know, where his character's going and you wonder, there's a twist in it and you, you don't really see where that's coming at first, but it was very entertaining. And I just wanna make a shout out to all our volunteers who've done such a great job. One of the reasons this festival's gotten better is jury chairs have solicited uh, films that might be Oscar nominated in short categories yes. or documentaries, and it's really increased our quality, don't you think? I agree. I think the solicitation has helped our, our festival get films in that maybe wouldn't have known about the Fargo Festival. Um, I think our, our name, I feel like, is getting out there by the hospitality that we show our guests when they come. I think they enjoy being here, but seeking out quality films from quality festivals has really increased, I think, our quality over the last couple of years. It means a lot to me that you're a fan of my work. And I wanna, I wanna give you something that I rarely offer to other fans, private reading, okay, just the two of us. Now you let me out of here, we can sit down, we can um, go over all this gym stuff or anything else you wanna explore. Okay, now let's start looking at some film clips. Let's start with narrative feature. Carrie and I, we're both on narrative feature. We're often on this jury, it's a lot of work, yes. but. Brittany Goodman, our jury chair, does a phenomenal job. We have 11 films from this category that made it through out of like 60 some submissions. Yeah, we had a lot of films. Tell us about some of the ones you liked. This year, some of my favorite, well, my favorite was the winner, which is Zombie Blood, Blood, right. Is an amazing film. I mean, it's, it is a film that you could see already running in a Cineplex somewhere. It just, it, it's the from quality. Sweden, right. Correct, and it's about Laplanders, mm -hmm. and it's about a young female who doesn't want to just be known for her heritage as a Laplander. She wants mainstream. She wants to go off to college. She wants to basically be by the general population. A normal Swede, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. And this film covers it from when you start, like when she's older and it goes back to when she's younger and the struggles that she's gone through with her family sort of stepping away from her heritage. There are scenes that will have the audience, I think, just riveted to the screen when you watch some of the things that that these Laplanders had to go through that are um, degrading and mm -hmm. it's a very heartfelt, she was right. a very good actress. 
We've already talked about some other narrative features, but I also liked Interlude from France. Everything Beautiful is Far Away is a wonderful film. Dark Blue Girl, yes. uh, Lane 1974, which is kind of like a Captain Fantastic motif of kids yes. living on the free range with hippie parents. We had a lot of strong female actors, even yes. young actresses this year that really carried the screen presence in a lot of the films. Those were very good films. The Girl in Lane, 1974, she's, she's very good. She's captivating on screen to watch. Mm -hmm. But now let's take a look at a clip from our narrative feature winner, Sami Blood from Sweden. Me father, and then Jag vill inte höra samiska från er en gång till. Här inne talar vi ett språk som alla förstår. Händerna. Eller Maja. Ett litet fattigt barn jag är, men glad jag är ändå. Jag vet min goda fader kär bär omsorg om de små. Han älskar mig, han är mig huld. Hans hand mig leda skall. Hans kärlek är mig mer än guld. Jag mer än värd än all. Bra. Ta av kläderna nu. Förstår hon? Eller Maja, får du gå med ett gott exempel nu? Eller Maja? All right, let's move to narrative short. This is typically a category that gets a lot of submissions, 90, 100 submissions, so the jury has a lot of work to do, and again, a very strong category with some nice films. Agree, they had some amazing films this year. I really enjoyed Confection. Mm -hmm. The actor in that, I thought, did a fantastic job. It's a very, it's an easy film to get into. It's an easy film to in, to jump into the characters and really feel a part of the story in that one. Um, Friday, That's a good I one. really liked that one. The young girl, again, in that one was amazing and had such presence on camera for such a young actress. But there are some scenes that just, you feel the emotions of what she's going through that get a little scary near the end. I mean, the whole idea of this, of this film is interesting with the Ted Bundy mm -hmm. assassin. Or the day he's executed, yes, right. Yes, and she's there taking instant pictures and selling them, sort of chronologically, you know, memorializing this day for these people, which it's like a celebration. It's a little different, but she's, she was very good in it. And Control is a good film. Alison yes. Becker, who I mentioned, will be here. Uh, to support that film and do a Q&A, and she's the one who has the acting seminar as well, so she'll yes. be here, but all these narrative shorts are worth are worth watching for sure. Absolutely. But let's take a look now at a clip from our winning film from Great Britain, Confection. How am I going to become the best version of myself? That is the question you need to be asking yourselves, ladies and gents. Don't pack up, please, Paula. We've another two minutes to enjoy yet. So... The thing about adults is they're desperate to convince us that there's some sort of finish line we should be aiming for. Because, guys, so often in life, the things that we regret most aren't the things we do, but the things we don't do. Mrs Cripps has a tattoo of a strawberry on her left wrist, a souvenir of her time spent as a fruit picker in Australia after university. I don't think that makes her ill-equipped to lecture us about regrets, but its faded appearance definitely suggests unsuccessful laser removal. All right, let's move to documentary short. This has become a very strong category in recent years, thanks to some good work by our jury chairs. And uh, again, I like this category a lot because they're, they're true stories, but they're not an hour and a half. There are 20 to 30 minutes. I agree. I think this category, you know, the quality of the films that come in to make a film that's short and tighter, I think, um, has been really increased over the last few years. I've enjoyed this category. Um, the one this year, Trophy. Trophy. Not only is the story, I mean, it's a one-sided documentary. It is. 
but it was done very well and the cinematography is amazing in it. Watching the filming of these grizzly bears was impressive to me. Um, it's about hunting of grizzly bears for yes. trophies, which is a controversial it is. Uh, topic as well. It is. Okay, let's take a look at a clip from the documentary short winner, Trophy. I learned about the trophy hunt through uh, an organization called Pacific Wild, who have been actively organizing against the hunt for years. I saw a documentary that they put out and some of the advocacy work that they've been doing and, and really wanted to become involved. We are in the West Kootenays to monitor, document, and expose the trophy hunting of grizzly bears. Yeah, we were driving up this road a few days ago, uh, saw a truck that was coming the opposite way, and when we pulled up next to him, he informed us that he was a grizzly hunter and that he'd shot and killed a bear recently and that it was in the back of his truck. So we got out and saw just a, a really gruesome scene. There's blood all over the truck bed. Uh, and the carcass of the bear was there, the head, the hide, the paws. Um, when we left, we drove up to the kill site. There were fresh, bloody paw prints, uh, claw marks as the bear had been shot and tried to run for its life. And, and where we're standing right here now is where the bear ended up collapsing and dying. All right, let's move to documentary feature. Always a very popular category with our film festival goers, and it's a category I enjoy as well because I do make documentaries from time to time at Prairie Public. Our winning film was about Curious George. Tell folks about it. Monkey Business was very entertaining film for me. I mean, everybody knows about Curious George, the books, and this was about the creators of Curious George, which in themselves had a very interesting, amazing mm -hmm. life. I mean, how they got together and and getting out of Europe during you know, the Nazi invasion and how he literally built a bike and they biked their way out of France was amazing. Um, and then they eventually find their way to the United States. And it was interesting to me how the children just were drawn to him mm -hmm. and he was so close to them, yet his wife was almost the complete polar right. opposite and kids were terrified of her. Yeah. Um, There's some other great films, too. I want to mention a couple. Supergirl, which is about a 13-year-old power lifter. Uh, the Girl Down Lock Anzi. It was a very interesting film uh, set in Switzerland. And Rodents of Unusual Size. You might not want to eat popcorn while watching <laughs> this. These are This is a film about actual giant rats that yes. live in Louisiana. So yeah. this one's not for the faint-hearted, I don't think, to no. watch this one. They are, they are <laughs> They're huge. Big. They're very huge. You can kind of... <laughs> maybe think that they're like otters or something, but Ugh. they are disgusting. Not it good. was very interesting though. It is. But let's take a look at a clip now from our winning documentary feature film, Monkey Business, The Adventures of Curious George's Creators. Well, if George could not get the fish, the fish would not get the cake. George would eat it. He liked cake too he would find another way to get a fish. This is a big, fat, curious George. Much too big in my mind, is it so heavy? Margaret was very childlike and very blunt, and she suffers fools poorly. I met Margaret through an ad in the Boston Globe. She needed someone to take care of her house and her dog. It was only when I started living with her that I noticed that she could be so rude. She said, you're fat. All right, let's move to our student film category. This is really becoming a very strong category. Many universities have great film programs, not only in Minnesota State University, Moorhead, but we've had many films from University of Southern California, Florida State, Florida, NYU, yeah. and this year's winning film 
is called Facing Mecca. Tell folks about that. Facing Mecca is about a man who has lost his wife. He's an immigrant living in Europe and he wants her buried facing Mecca. And that sparked uh, community controversy about how they'd be able to do that, how long the body could stay mm -hmm. there. It caused a lot of issues. And it's about this man trying to help him, trying to help this immigrant figure That's, something out. Right, and the immigrant is played by Jay Abdo. Yes. He attended the festival last year yes. uh, with that wonderful winning film, and he's very good in this film again. He's very good. He's very easy to get drawn into his character. You feel all the emotions when you watch him on screen. He has a very strong film presence. I also want to mention Devin Manny, who is from Fargo-Moorhead, and his film Cradle will be shown, and that won a Student Academy Award this year. Yes. So that's very exciting that Devin is going to be here. But let's now take a look at a clip from the winning student film from this year, Facing Mecca. Die Frau muss sofort begraben werden. Man lässt ihn 24 Stunden gegen Mekka. Du, jetzt ist es mal Wochenende. Oh, danke. Das ist ja die einzige Flüchtlingsfamilie weit und breit. Und deine hier, Kollegen, kommen auch alle hier. Ja. Wo liegt jetzt das genau? Saudi-Arabien. Ja, ich meine, das ist Himmels richtig. Für eine Person können wir nicht den ganzen Uhren Friedhof umgraben. All right, let's move to the animation category. Always a fan favorite. Carrie, you've chaired this uh, category in the past, and what I a have. great job we've done over the years getting Oscar-nominated shorts to the festival. We have. We have had some amazing animated films come in. Um, one of my favorites this year is by Don Hertzfeld, World of, World of Tomorrow, Episode 2. Um, this is actually a sequel mm -hmm. to one that we showed here couple years couple ago. couple years ago, maybe five, and Don came yes, to the festival. Don yep. came. He was amazing. He actually even spoke to students mm -hmm. over at the campuses. He was very generous with his time. He's a very talented artist. His his craft sort of looks sketched. It's yes. a very simplified. Yeah. Um, the voice of the young girl in this is very captivating on screen. It's a very entertaining film. I think the audience will love it. And I'll, let's also mention Negative Space is a film yes. that's entered in the festival. That is one of the five nominees for the Oscar for Best Animated Short. So you'll want to take in that one as well. Absolutely. But now let's take a look at a clip from the winning animation film this year, World of Tomorrow, Episode 2, The Burden of Other People's Thoughts. A round head, like a flower, and the blue coming down from it. Hello, Emily. I am an incomplete backup copy of your third generation clone, grown in a storage facility in the Outer Rings 254 years into your future. I was a little girl when we witnessed the great explosion of Earth and the end of your genetic line. You have to sit down, okay? I suffer many deteriorations. I am alone. And our final category is experimental, not a category to everyone's liking, but I do invite people to check these films out. And James Hughes will be here in attendance, and his film, The Velvet Abstract, is the winning film, so that's exciting that he's going to be here, isn't it? It's very exciting, and I think, especially in experimental, if we can get filmmakers here, it gives the audience also a chance to ask questions of things that maybe they've never really seen before or are uncertain. A couple other good films, Structure of Nature, Nurse Me is one I really liked. Yes. But our winning film, uh, Christine Hoper, is our new jury chair on Experimental, and she actually uh, kind of gave me a write-up of what she thinks the film was about, so I'm going to read that. Uh, the Velvet Abstract, the first half of the film, reveals vices and darker thoughts, the things humans focus on to avoid responsibility, 
The second half pivots to what's happening to the planet in the absence of concerted efforts to save it. I also want to mention this film is narrated by Tobias Menzies. He's an actor who's been on Game of Thrones. And the score is composed by Jean Pascal Benthus, who has scored films like The Danish Girl and The Imitation Game and Argo. And now here's a clip from the winning experimental film, The Velvet Abstract. Ignorant to the answers from the universal mother. Not concerned for victims of war, only who won. Smiling into the looking glass of an empty soul. And I'd also like to mention the two-minute movie contest will again be on Friday night, March 23rd, starting about 9.30 p.m. at the main venue at the Fargo Theater. Greg Carlson, our friend, runs this two-minute contest. The films have to be two minutes long, and this is a wild, exciting night, and the kids love it. Well, that concludes the 2018 Fargo Film Festival preview show. Remember to check the website for ticketing and festival pass information at FargoFilmFestival.org or FargoTheater.org or call the theater at 701-239-8385. And we'll see you at the festival March 20th through the 24th. And remember, why go to Cannes when you can go to Fargo? We'll see you at the festival. So long.